Welcome. In this video, I'll discuss the vertical magnetic field in large aspect ratio tokamaks. So, in previous video, we looked at the Shafanov shift that the plasma, if they have a pressure inside the, the torus, uh, will be pushed outwards as the magnetic axis will be moved outwards. Um, the same thing happens uh, due to several other mechanisms we also discussed in previous videos, like the hoop force, the a toroidal plasma, um, if left by itself, will expand outwards. And so we need a, a vertical magnetic field to hold the plasma inwards. Um, and so the, in this video, I'll go through the, the more mathematical calculation of how, how you calculate this, um, whereas other videos look at just why you, why you need this in a, a more kind of a qualitative way. Um, so this video will actually go through and calculate uh, what magnetic field needs to be for, for a torus. Um, and we'll do this by taking the solution from last time, the Shafanov shift, um, and matching that to an outer solution. So we look at what, what the magnetic field must look like far away from the plasma um, and match that to the solution that we get from the uh, from the force balance inside the plasma. And this will give us a, a solution for the required vertical field. So first the, the motivation. So if we have a, uh, a plasma sitting inside uh, a conducting wall. So you have a conducting wall on the outside The, the vacuum vessel, and then inside we have the, the plasma. So we have the Shafanov shift, if you remember last time, that so the axis is shifted relative to the geometric middle. So this is this, is this delta, it's the, the Shafanov shift. So that the, just as the axis is shifted when the outer boundary, if the outer boundary is held fixed, um, if there is if the outer boundary is not held fixed, which is what happens if there's a if there's a vacuum in here, so if in if in here we have a vacuum, um, and in here we have have the plasma, so I'll draw. So this is the this is the plasma in, in here, um, and then this is a, a vacuum, and then we have the, the wall outside. What will happen is just as the Shafanov shift will move the the, the center outwards. This whole plasma will move outwards, and so this plasma will will move outwards towards the wall. Um, what will happen is the field will be compressed at the wall, so increase the the strength of the field here, and it will reduce the strength of the field here um, until the magnetic pressure balances such the outwards force um, due to the hoop force and the and the plasma pressure, and so it reaches some kind of steady state with the plasma pressed against the outer wall. And then if you wait for long enough, um, or, your, or the conducting wall isn't very conducting, the plasma will essentially leak, the field will leak out, and the plasma will just hit the wall. So if you want to control the location of the plasma, then you need a way of, of moving it inwards and outwards. Um, and to do this, if you have a, a current seen to the page, you want to move this left and right, um, then you need a, a vertical magnetic field so we need vertical field uh, to produce this radial force. To produce radial force on the plasma, which can keep it at a location you want. So you might want to control where the where the heat is deposited on the limiter or a diverter, um, and so you need to be able to control this radial location. Um, and so what we can do is, is in this calculation, we'll fix the edge of the plasma, and say so this is where we, we want some preset location, um, and we work out what what vertical field we need to be able to do that? So here, if I draw on vertical fields, so here we have a field. There'll be a field going through the plasma, which is in the vertical direction like this, and this will produce an inwards force uh, on the plasma, which will help to balance uh, balance the tendency to expand rate the outwards. Uh, and this is produced in a in a tokamak. If we have so these are some flux surfaces again. I'll try and draw the Shafanov shift, kind of exaggerated like this. Uh, and this is the other side like this. So this is a, a toroidal machine like this. Uh, we would have a coil at the top of the machine and a coil underneath the machine. It's supposed to be roughly the same size. Um, these are basically Helmholtz coils. And so we have a current going in the same direction. 
um, and this producing a, a vertical field. So vertical field goes through the, the whole plasma. And so by by changing the currents in the coils, um, you can change the, the inwards force on, on the plasma. And so confine it or, or move it to the location where you want. So what we're going to do here is take the solution inside the plasma and then say that outside the plasma um, the field looks like essentially a, a wire, a current, so a, a current carrying wire. It's so basically a current carrying wire like this is, is the plasma. Just carrying an I, IP um, plus a, a vertical field. So plus vertical field. So if you're outside the, the plasma edge, uh, essentially doesn't matter what the what the structure of the current is inside, it just appears like the field of a wire uh, plus a vertical field. So it says in the in the vacuum region, we treat it as the current due to a circular wire, which is the, the plasma, um, plus a vertical field. And so the the field due to a wire can be calculated analytically. So this is uh, an analytic equation, you look it up, magnetic statics. This is the the flux due to the plasma, which is basically due to the, the wire. Um, these are elliptic integrals, so this is uh, the first kind and this is the second kind. So it's only a semi-analytic expression, not really a closed expression, because these are these are basic integrals. Um, but it can be calculated relatively, relatively straightforwardly. Um, there's a parameter k here, it's k, where k squared so then, to do this matching, what we're going to do is, is take, make an expansion to a region where the radius is much larger than the minor radius of the plasma, but still much smaller than the, the major radius. So this is important that you're, you're not expanding to infinite radius, because um, then you just get just the current the field due to a straight wire. Um, you have to re retain the toroidal effect effects. And so we're saying that the, the radius is much bigger than the plasma, so we can treat it as a circular wire, but it's still much smaller than the, the major radius. Um, and so this calculation only really works for, for large aspect ratio. But in this, in this regime, we can write the, the plasma flux due to the circular wire in this form. So you've done an expansion. There's a, there are more series of more terms, of course, but here we've just got first order in, in cos, cos theta. Uh, so here this is uh, the expansion, this is still just taking this analytic expression and, and expanding it um, using this limit. And this is the, is the field due to the plasma. Um, then we have additional fields due to the vertical fields. This is I'm going to call psi v is for vertical field, and this is just given by r naught. This reference uh, times b v of the vertical field times cos theta, where theta is the poloid angle. Again, if you if this is not really familiar, then the very last video might might help. Um, so theta is a poloid angle. Um, psi v here is the is the flux, um, and b v is a constant vertical field. So there are two components we need to look at here. One is the uh, so the total field outside the plasma is this plasma flux plus the vertical field flux, and there are terms which are constant in theta, and there are terms which depend on cos theta. So the the terms which are constant constant in theta look like this, and so if you work out from that what the the B poloidal field is. So the component which is just dependent on minor radius, not uh, doesn't depend on theta. So this is just one over r naught times d psi by dr, and this you can calculate is just mu naught i over two pi r. So this is what it expects. This is just the the field due to. just due to a straight wire. So this is the, the component which doesn't depend on toroidal toroidicity, so it's just a straight wire. Um, and then the cos theta are the 
corrections to that, which depend on, on the fact that it's bent around in a, in a circle. So then we can take the cos theta components. So we have the components which depend on cos theta. So here we have called psi 1, uh, which depends on, this also depends on r. And this comes from this term up here. So we have this cos theta term here. So I'm just going to take out the factor of cos theta and just write out these terms here. So th these are the factors in front of cos theta. This will be the exterior solution. So outside the plasma, um, this is what the solution must look like, at least in the large aspect ratio um, approximation. So we have a component which is constant in theta plus, uh, plus this component. So we're writing that, that psi, um, which is some function of, of r and theta, is this sort of psi naught, which is just a function of r, which gives this, this component here, um, plus psi 1, which also depends on r, times cos theta. And then, of course, you have higher order corrections. Um, but for now, we're just looking at matching this component. Um, from the last video on Shivanov shift, derive this equation uh, inside the plasma from, from force balance. And this is again using the same expansion that there's a psi 1 uh, component here, which depends on r, and is the cos theta component. Um, so this is the toroidal, toroidal component. Um, we have a pressure gradients, we have poloidal field gradients, um, all providing a radial force balance. Uh, and so the first thing to do is then is to integrate this equation um, so we get an expression for psi 1. And then when we get an expression for psi 1 from the plasma, we will match that against this expression outside the plasma. And then this component here will give us the, the vertical field. So first I have to integrate, so if you integrate this right hand side, so we integrate this equation once in, in R. So it's integral from 0 to R of, of this right hand side equation here. Um, and then this we divide into, into different parts. So from 0 to A, where A is the plasma boundary, um, for example, the pressure gradient is non-zero, whereas outside A, so for, for A to R, um, outside the plasma, we can assume a vacuum solution. And so now we can integrate um, these equ equations. So outside the plasma, so from A onwards, out, out, outside this part here. So here we can use the, the vacuum solution. And so we have that B theta is B theta at 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 the vac at the boundary, so at A times A over R, over R. So it's just a one over R scaling of the magnetic field, the poloidal field outside the plasma. Um, and then here, this part, the pressure gradient is only integrated from zero to A. Uh, but this we can integrate by parts. So by integrating this equation by parts, we end up with an integral, the radial integral of the pressure. Um, this essentially is like a, a volume integral because uh, we're integrating over in radius, or we're integrating kind of the, across the, the cross section of the plasma. And so this ends up like a, a volume integral of the pressure. By dividing by the, the poloidal field pressure, we end up with this beta p factor. So this is the poloidal beta. This is basically the, the volume average of the pressure. And so the, the thermal pressure divided by the magnetic, poloidal magnetic pressure. And this part here, we have a, uh, so this is, gives us one over r squared times an r. So this becomes an integral of one over r, it gives us a log. And so this, this part here, well, this first part becomes uh, an internal inductance. And so we write this whole equation as where this, so this term, first term here has gone to, to here. This second term from here and the second, this third term has come from the, from the pressure. Now the Li is the in normalized internal inductance. So Li is a commonly used normalization of the internal inductance. Um, it's defined by this, so L, capital L, is the internal inductance. And it's actually normalized by the unit length, the length of the, of the plasma in the toroidal direction. Um, so capital Li, just to remind you, um, is essentially a measure of the, the internal energy so the energy is stored in the magnetic field um, by the by the current. So it depends on the distribution of current um, in the in the plasma. So half Li is, is times the current squared. 
So it appears kind of like a, a mass, so half m v squared, but in electrical electrical uh, equations. And this is related to the, the total uh, energy stored in the poloidal field. So this is the integral over the, the whole volume of the, the energy stored in the poloidal field is related to this, uh, the, the square of the current times Li. And so by putting these together, you can, you can write down the Li in this form, which is how it's been converted. So you see this integral from naught to a of, of b squared to r um, is this expression here. And so this has become, become here, the Li. Um, all the other terms I hope are fairly straightforward. It's this, this logarithm of r over, r, r over a, for example, just from, from this term. Um, so putting this together, remember we, we were integrating the right-hand side um, of, of this equation here. So we took this equation, integrated it once in r, and so we can just, uh, I'll just write out this equation, what we've got so far. So now we're going to do integral integrate this again. So we have a d by dr of, of r1, we want of psi1. So we want to find this psi1. So we're going to do another integral in uh, in r. Um, and now we need to take a bit more care of the, the boundaries. Um, so we're going to choose that essentially psi1 is equal to 0 at uh, at r equals a. This, de and this defines the, the limits of, um, of the integral, because um, so we can define this, this here using the boundary conditions. Um, and this is just so we're setting the edge of the boundary has, has zero shift. Um, and this is consistent with what we used um, for the exterior solution. And so we can write the this equation here as, right here I've divided through by r b theta squared and then integrated in, in r. I'm starting the integral from a to r so that at r equals to a, these integrals are zero. So that this this boundary condition is is obeyed here by setting this this lower boundary here to to a. Um, here we're in the vacuum, and so here we again set that the b theta function of r is b theta at a um, times a over r. Um, these integrals are a little bit nasty, but but fairly straightforward. Uh, so the second one becomes these has these two terms. This first one, if you do the substitution, this is quite straightforward. Um, this just becomes the integral of r with some constants, um, dr, and so you get an r squared. Um, and so this this part here, so you have this a squared b theta squared at, at a, which comes from, from making this substitution. And then we have a half r squared, because the integral of r, so you get a half r squared, and then minus a squared from this, this lower boundary. Okay, so that, that one's fairly straightforward. By multiplying through by, by b theta, you can, write, uh, you can write this b theta, it's usually written as this, so we have a mu naught i, at least in, in the vacuum, it's mu naught i after over 2 pi r in, in the vacuum, where i is the, the plasma current, and so you can write Right, psi one. So finally, this is this is from the, the plasma, like from the internal solution for the for the field. Now, of course, these components here have gone to there. Um, this factor of a half has come from from this part here. So you have a, a quarter here, and this two has turned into a four. So we've absorbed factor two here. And so this quarter has become a half. So that term here has, has gone to there. Um, and then the second term here is just from, from this part here. It's gone to there. And finally, we also take a, a limit. So we want to look at where, um, so if basically r is much bigger than, than a, so here we'll be able to match against the, the outer solution. And so essentially is, is taking the ratio of, of r over a's and then doing an expansion around this, you get this, this expansion. Um, which is just linear in, in R. Um, and then this we can match um, against this one, which I'll mark the stars. So this is the outer solution I want to match against, which depends on, on the vertical field. So I'll take this component here, uh, which is the outer solution. And we want 
to match against the, the plasma solution. So I want to match it against, against this term here. So the outer solution I'll write out out here. So psi one, this is psi one inner, this is psi one outer. And so we just set these two these two to be equal. And then rearrange to find rearrange to find this. So we take the terms from here. So we're just putting this on, on one side. Um, we see both of these, these two have the same prefactor. So there's mu naught i over four pi. And so we just basically put all these terms here and then mark these terms here and then all these, these terms here. So we just end up with, and then we have these terms here from, from the outer solution. And now these combine in various different ways. So this, this here combines together. Uh, so this obviously just cancels out the, the R's, so we're just getting up with an A, so this is this is log. Then you have a, a half and a one, so you get a minus three over two. Um, the R's cancel, so we end up with this expression for, for BV. Uh, and this is actually always uh, bigger than, than zero, uh, so you just the terms in this equation. Um, and so this gives a, a vertical magnetic field uh, which acts to enhance the field on the outside and reduce on, on the inside. So if you have a, a plasma with a, a current, so this is the, the plasma, so you have a particular current in, in here, um, it's producing a, a field, uh, which let's say is going so have a current out of the page, so the current, so the BP is doing this, it's B theta due to the, the plasma. Uh, the external field will act in the same way, so it's it's vertical like this. A vertical field, um, and see it it's in the same direction on the outside. So the same direction as the the plasma field on the outside, uh, and in opposite directions on the inside. And so this acts to, to increase the ploidal field pressure on the outside, decrease it on the inside, and push the plasma inwards. Okay, hopefully that was that was useful. Um, so it's, it's quite a famous equation. It's quite widely used, first derived by Shafanov. Um, and it's valid in the large aspect ratio limit, but it's quite often used as a rule of thumb for working out how much field you might need in a, in a tokamak. Okay, thank you.